Sunset Boulevard has seen its share of memorable queer venues, but don't judge a book by its cover or a building by its facade. The unassuming edifice at 8795 Sunset at Horn Avenue has housed two legendary locales. You've likely heard of Wolfgang Puck Spago. It was housed there from 1982 to 1997 before moving on to Beverly Hills to enhance its notoriety for fancy California cuisine, high prices, and hungry celebrity sightings. But first, it was Cafe Gala, a swanky supper club that catered to movie stars with a separate bar area mainly frequented by gay men. The Cafe Gala was jokingly referred to as Cafe Gala. Fegala is a Yiddish term for gay or more prominently called the world's most interesting supper club. It opened in 1939 as the brainchild of red-headed patroness Catherine de Elanger, a Franco-Germanic baroness and for certain fag hag. At Café Gala, you could find the likes of Cole Porter, Judy Garland, Lena Horne, Dorothy Dandridge, Christopher Isherwood, and Kay Thompson, to name a few. Even the reclusive Greta Garbo could be talked into having a night out at the gala. Well, there was a kind of don't ask, don't tell policy in that era for those in the entertainment industry. Gays had to be very discreet, but Cafe Gala was one respectable place where they could find a bit of queer comfort without getting fingered. In the tabloids, a gay singer named Johnny Walsh ran the club with an iron fist and a huge white handkerchief that he waved around. Walsh would growl at guys who got a little bit too relaxed. Butch it up! Butch it up! I don't want people to think I'm running a grobateria here. For a brief time in the early 1950s, the legendary pianist Bobby Short plied his trade as a sophisticated saloon singer at the gala, years before taking up residence at the Cafe Carlisle in New York. Bobby never officially came out, but at the gala, with its eclectic and mildly integrated crowd, he never really had to. This massive building on the corner of Sunset Boulevard and Holloway Drive is quite the sight to behold, with its wild structure of ornate greenery. But it dwarfs the charming little bar that once resided in its place. The old bar walls were decorated by a Disney artist, the waiters wore red sarongs. The drinks were killer. And if all that didn't do you in, the music sure did. This vanished restaurant and club was called the Bali and was advertised as the it bar for everybody, but was a covertly known gay spot. It was described as the perfect place for the partially potted. Club Bali was owned by an LA society man named, get this, Icky Outhwaite. But the power was all in the pianist, a guy named Bruce Fletcher. Fletcher all but flew around in a purple cape and sang wicked songs with titles like Get It Up Kitty or Keep An Eye On His Business. Initially booked for a mere two week gig, Fletcher reigned at the Club Bally from 1935 until the club's closing in 1940. Everyone drank and laughed at Bruce Fletcher's antics. Whether it was silent screen beauty Louise Brooks, who popularized the iconic flapper bobbed haircut look, or actor and future homophobic president Ronald Reagan. Unfortunately, Bruce did not carry on the fun after the club's closing. In 1941, at the young age of 34, he committed suicide, a tragic loss. But we can honor his talent and his place in history by finding his music on the internet and having a listen. It's a truly amusing relic of an era when risque double entendres ruled. We can let ourselves imagine what once was and what could have been. Stuart Timmons' favorite Fletcher song goes like this. I want a cozy little nest Somewhere in the west Where the best of the worst they'll always be 
I want an expensive, extensive excursion to the realms of in, per and diversion. It's the simple things in life for me.